Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. And I am having fun in On One Photo Raw 2019 today. And uh, you know, the more I dig into it, the more I find to like about it. It's really a great product. I'm having a lot of fun. There's a lot of power in it. Some great masking options. And while this video is not really about, here's a particular thing you can go do. It's really more of a workflow video. And what I've found is that I'm developing some some patterns, if you will, in my editing with On One, and um, I'm starting kind of in the develop, not kind of. I'm starting in the develop tab, and then generally jumping over to the effects tab with the filters, and then kind of finishing up with the uh, the local adjustments tab. And I'm also kind of doing different things in each. In this photo, I kind of use my typical approach, which I think of editing. First, I want to get the the light. Um, properly aligned and then I want to work on details and then I want to work on color and I kind of do um, each of those steps in each of those three different places so I thought I'd jump into that here's the photo that I'm talking about now it's a sunset in Prague uh, over the Charles Bridge but it's um, uh, you know the sky's a little too bright that sort of thing anyway after doing these multiple steps in on one I was able to turn it into that which is you know much more vibrant uh, more my kind of style I just like colorful photos uh, but I did some combination of filters and some masking and, and things like that. So I wanted to walk through that. So I'm going to reset all these filters and then we'll uh, walk through this edit. Okay, so here we are now in the tone and color section of develop. And in this photo, I didn't need to use details, lens correction, or transform. I've been experimenting with them in a number of photos, but nothing to do with this photo. Uh, this is the before and this is the current state after making these edits. This develop tab to me is very reminiscent of raw develop in Luminar. Um, but you can see here, I took the highlights down significantly, added a little bit of temperature, tint, saturation, and vibrance, and kind of went from that to that. So, you know, the way I look at this filter is I'm kind of setting the stage. So I'm managing the highlights and the shadows and things like that. I'm setting the stage, kind of balancing the light. And what I like to get is a fairly well balanced exposure. And I think going from that, to that, now I'm at a point where I'm thinking, okay, I got some color, I got the light under control, now it's kind, kind of time to jump in and start to do a little bit of details. And so that's where I pop over to the effects tab and I've got two filters here that I used. The first filter is dynamic contrast. Let me just turn that on. And the main reason I use it is just because it's really powerful and really awesome. But as you can see in the masking menu here, I have masked it in. So actually, let me, uh, let me just start with uh, when you turn on dynamic contrast, let me turn it off again. Um, if you look at the land and the bridge, you know they're a little, they're a little bit almost hazy. Uh, they don't quite uh, have any detail showing. They don't really pop at all, um, and they're kind of uh, like I said, hazy almost, especially the, the distant land. Um, so you know I wanted to bring that back and brighten that up and stuff like that. So I started out with dynamic contrast, and I bumped up medium and large there, and also uh, increased shadows and whites and blacks just a little bit. So just to give it a little bit more. Um, punch if you will and then I masked it in so you can see the mask now remember black conceals and white reveals so in the black areas I'm concealing or hiding this effect and this effect was just really a little bit of brightening the photo but also adding that pop of contrast dynamic contrast kind of crunches up the details a little bit just kind of uh, just makes the photo gives a little bit more depth and that sort of thing so um, I revealed it or, and I masked it in. So I just went over here, grabbed this brush, and then painted it into these areas. So once again, I hide the view. I painted it in across this landmass and the bridge. And at that point, I was like, okay, that looks a lot better. I might want to massage it a little bit more. So that's where I wanted to get tone enhancer. However, knowing that I was going to massage the same area, what I did first is I already had the mask built on the dynamic contrast filter. So I just clicked copy, and then I went and added tone enhancer. And I came in here, opened the masking menu, and I just clicked paste. And it put the mask, the same mask on. And so that makes it easier. That way I don't have to try to recreate the mask. Especially useful if you've done a very complicated mask. I have not in this case. This is just some brush strokes. But nonetheless, it comes in handy. So my mask I applied automatically. And here I just bumped up the contrast a little bit, took down the whites, and added a little bit of detail and clarity. So if you, again, you'll look at the strip of land in the middle of the photo and the bridge uh, coming into the foreground here. There's the before and the after. It's subtle, uh, but it gives it a little bit more pop and I just like that. So that's where I am now and I'm happy with it. So I've basically done light and 
effectively kind of like details by popping all this contrast and that sort of thing. So what's left is color, and so that's when I went over to the Local Adjustment tab. Okay, and as the name implies, local adjustments are obviously designed to be done locally. Now, I did a video recently about local adjustments. I'll put it um, a linked up there. But basically, you have to mask them in. So you can add the uh, adjustment. Uh, you just click on Add Adjustment to add one. I'll do that in a minute. Um, and I added this one here, uh, but it requires you to mask it in. So what I did is I, I added that, uh, and what I wanted to do is start with the colors in the sky. So I went over here, I got the gradient, and I did this linear bottom. And so you can see the little masking icon next to that. White's at the top, black's at the bottom. So white reveals, black conceals. And so um, whatever I do in this adjustment uh, filter is gonna be revealed in the top. So what did I do? I added some contrast, took down the exposure, um, uh, actually took down the midtones a little bit and reduced haze as well. That tends to, you know, it's basically designed to remove atmospheric haze from a sky. So that's really nice. And then a little pop of temperature and tint. And again, that was in the top of the photo. So there's the before and the after. So uh, my, my adjustments have been applied to the sky, but of course now the photo is uneven from a color standpoint. And so what I wanna do is go make some similar adjustments in the bottom. So I'm gonna say add adjustment. And this time I'm gonna um, go with linear top, right? So linear top means the top is masked out and the bottom is gonna be visible, right? So I'm gonna drop that in here. And you can see it's darkening the photo automatically. And that's because it defaults to an exposure of negative one. Well, I don't want that. I want an exposure of, I gotta look, it's like negative 0.1. So, um, you know, just a tiny bit of darkening. Um, I'm gonna bump up the temperature, like, you know, 14 or something. And um, now I think the colors match, but but here's the one of the cool things I, I like about on one that um, I just sort of thought of while I was doing this. And I was like, you know, I like that. And I love the gradient. I could just drop it on the bottom of the photo and, and you're done. But the truth is I wasn't done. I, I don't like the color being on this walkway here on the bridge. Um, it kind of um, drowns out the visibility of that component of the photo. And I just don't like it. So what I did is I went over here and I grabbed the brush. And I wasn't sure you could do this, not having had to do it yet in on one. And um, I just went up here to opacity. I got it at 60 and I got paint out. And all I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm painting out that color adjustment, that entire local adjustment. I'm removing it or painting it out from the bottom of this photo here. In other words, I'm just taking that color um, out of the bridge simply because I just didn't like it. Um, so now it's been removed from the bridge at a 60% opacity, which means it's not a full removal of it, but I removed most of it. So if I show you the mask, it's gray. So some of that color is gonna bleed through, which I think would make it look natural, but it's not all gonna bleed through, which I think if it was like white or really bright, it would probably, probably look a little bit unnatural. I did that because I thought too much of that color, that full effect of color across the bottom of the photo, it just kind of washed out the bridge and made it look kind of blah. And um, so I went in there, so I basically used a gradient mask and then a brush mask on top of it. And you can do that in case you're curious. And that really got me to my final result. So let me show you the before. Here's the photo, you know, excuse me, a little bit of blown out sky and a little bit, you know, lack of visibility in the mid, uh, mid, mid middle of the frame, if you will, that distant um, stretch of land and limited visibility into the bridge missing color, missing pop and detail, and now much more vibrant, much more to my liking. It may or may not be to yours, but I got the colors looking a lot better. I got the contrast looking better. I think you got much better visibility into the parts of the photo that my eye are naturally led to uh, and control that color on the bridge by masking it out at a reduced opacity. And that's my workflow for that one. So hopefully that helps. Again, it was kind of about light, detail, and color. So that was like the develop tab, the effects tab, and then the local adjustment tab really got me to this final result. So one more time before and after. That's how it went today in On One, my friends. And uh, I'm having fun. I'll keep doing videos. If you have things you would like me to talk about or do videos about in On One, by all means, leave a comment and uh, just let me know what you think about the video. So love to interact with you guys. Give me a, a comment, like, share, subscribe, that sort of thing. And I'll be back soon with more videos. Thanks again. Have a great one. I appreciate you watching. Take care and adios.